This is the Empire Hydrogen Fuel Enhancement System. What it does is inject a tiny amount of hydrogen and oxygen gas into any large diesel engine. So that would be like a class 6 or class 8 truck, a bus, a large generator, heavy equipment, any engine generally from 6 liters up to 16 liters in size. Now you know that inside a diesel engine, the ignition occurs by compression and not by a spark. What happens is, the ignition starts in the center of the cylinder and then it spreads out to the walls. But of course you've got engine coolant running around in the engine. So the walls of the cylinder are actually cooler than the center area. Diesel fuel has a flame speed of 30 centimeters per second. That means the flame spreads at 30 centimeters per second. So what happens is that the fuel around the outside walls doesn't burn. This is not a secret, this is something that's well known. This is why you can smell diesel when you walk past a diesel engine. I wish they'd call it unburned diesel, they actually call it unburned hydrocarbons, but it's literally just diesel fuel that is not burned. And then you've got the partially burned fuel, and that's the black smoke, the diesel particulates. Hydrogen, on the other hand, has a flame speed that's 10 times as large, almost 300 centimeters per second. So if you sprinkle just a tiny bit of hydrogen into the engine, what happens is the flame spreads instantly across the cylinder and you burn all of that unburned fuel. So what we're doing isn't magic. All we're doing is burning all the fuel that you're paying for rather than letting some of it go out the exhaust. Obviously that results in better fuel economy. We're measuring 10 to 25 percent and it depends on the type of driving that you're doing. But it also significantly cuts your emissions. Um, for example, We've measured CO2 emissions cut at 28%, that's greenhouse gases. We've measured nitric oxide, NOx, emissions cut at 48%. And we've measured diesel particulates at two-thirds, and it depends on the driving that you're doing, whether you're doing lots of start and stop driving or highway driving. So we've measured significant benefits and significant cuts in emissions in all of those areas. Now let's take a look inside to see just exactly how it works. Inside the unit, we have two reservoirs filled with distilled water, and you must use distilled water. And that water is mixed with an electrolyte, a chemical that makes the water electrically conductive. The water flows down this hose into what we call the cell stacks. Now, you remember in the old days when you had to fill your batteries up with water? Well, that was because your batteries were gassing off the water, turning it into hydrogen and oxygen, and gassing that out. Well, imagine if you did that on purpose, and that's exactly what we've done. You can see here we have a series of plates, just like in a battery. We run a high current, a high electrical current, through those plates from your truck engine, and that splits the water into hydrogen and oxygen gases. Those gases flow back up the hose into this reservoir, and from there, they flow out through this dryer blowback unit and then out directly to the engine air intake. This dryer blowback unit is vitally important, and let me explain why. It performs two, com two important functions. First is that the gases would have some moisture in them. So we want to capture most, but not all of that moisture. So this unit captures the moisture, but allows a small amount to pass through. Now that amount is very small, it would be like driving in a fog, actually in a very light fog. However, if we didn't allow some moisture to go through, the burn temperature inside the engine would increase slightly, only by about 20 degrees, but that's enough to double the nitric oxide production. Nitric oxide is a very bad chemical. However, by allowing the small amount of moisture to flow through, what actually happens is that we cut the nitric oxide production. We reduce the temperature inside the engine and cut the nitric oxide by about half. On the other side, obviously these containers have a little bit of hydrogen gas in them, very small amount. We don't want any sort of spark from the engine to get back, so this also will arrest any spark from the engine from coming back into the hydrogen oxygen storage tanks. With water inside and operating in Canada, obviously freezing would be a problem. What we've done is we've inserted heating rods into the back of the cell stacks. These heating rods work just off the power from your own truck battery. 
So if you park your truck overnight or you park it for a weekend, the heating rods will stop the water from freezing. On the other hand, if you're going away for a longer period or if you're uh, in very, very cold weather, then you can plug this into the wall as well and that will, start, that will heat the entire unit for a longer period. When the unit is actually running, when your truck is running, it generates enough heat that it won't freeze on its own. It's only when you stop the truck, but you need to worry about heating it. So we have the heating rods to solve that problem. If you can see here, we've got some very nice certifications. We have been certified by the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA in the United States. We've also compliant with ISO 22734. That's a specific ISO certification just for hydrogen generation units like this and we've got CE certification as well. You'll notice on our front cover that we've also recently won the EcoStar Award for Technology Excellence. We're very proud of being given that award. The entire unit obviously enclosed in this beautiful stainless steel case, very sturdy, built to go on a truck or a piece of heavy equipment, built for the outdoor environment, built to take whatever you need to throw at it. Here we have a few pictures of our units installed. Here's a class eight truck. This fellow drives from Vancouver to Edmonton and back every week. Here's a concrete truck. Here's a municipal works truck. This is uh, actually a vacuum truck. Here is a piece of heavy equipment that's using our unit. And a bus that has it installed inside the luggage rack. And here we have a generator with our unit installed. We've designed this system to work with anybody who's using maybe fifty to $100,000 in fuel a year. So that's typical long haul trucks or anybody who's operating heavy equipment for eight hours a day. Using that much fuel, you pay back our system in six to nine months. After that, it's basically free. All you're doing is adding water. In normal everyday use, all you're going to do is open the top, remove the two water reservoir lids, and fill them up with distilled water. And we recommend that you do this every time you fill with fuel. If you're doing that every day, fill with water every day. Normally, it would only take about one liter of water per day to run this system. The tanks hold four liters each, so there's quite a bit of water in there. Normally, topping them up would just be one liter. Close up the lids again, securely. Close the lid. And off you go.